Yep. I'm ready. We're ready to roll. And uh, I got a big surprise for you. Um, you're you're, you're going to love this. Okay. I'm telling you. Like, just, no. just get. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. This? this? Yeah. Chevy Malibu? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Dude, sweet. Ride. Right, right, right. Sick, bro. Nailed it. Wow, is this the 2017? Yes, it is. Oh, the 2017 sick. Chevy Malibu. Top in. All right, let's do it. You driving? I'll take the <laughs> First question, Dave, how did you uh, wind up in, in the industry? What's, what's your background? Well, so I, um, I lived a couple years in, in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, right out of college, and kind of did my ski bum post-grad work there in Jackson Hole, and ended up working at uh, this firm, RRC Associates, where I've been for the past almost 20 years, and been fortunate enough to work with a lot of different ski resorts, and state associations, and the National Skiers Association, on a lot of numbers, tracking skier days and skier demographics and all kinds of other information about people who ski and snowboard. And it's just been always really interesting. Every season's got a little bit different different angle on what's happening in the industry, but we, we tend to try to look at the what's happening in the long term and what's, what's the future of skiing and snowboarding look like. And so just, what, two years ago, the National Skier Association um, had you uh, had RRC um, do a in-depth study of millennials and um, I'm curious to hear more about that from you what, what were you know what came out of that what were some of the the primary barriers that you can you can point to that we can begin addressing yeah the study was really interesting we talked to millennials in a bunch of different markets across the country and you know we learned there's obviously a, a multitude of various barriers that are of a varying um, size when it comes to participation but a couple of the key ones were really you know time and distance because a lot of the millennials um, we spoke with and we we surveyed really live in more in metro areas so for them to get to a ski resort the distances can be an issue, but also just the basic transportation because not all the millennials who live in cities actually have cars. So getting to the resorts uh, via public transportation or carpooling apps or uh, rideshare programs, there's opportunity for, for ski areas to really investigate you know, what are, the, what are the transportation options to my ski area? And if somebody who doesn't have a car, is there a way for them to get here? You know, cost is always a always a barrier to participation in any activity. I mean, here we are on Lake Michigan. I'm sure going out in a boat is not necessarily the cheapest thing you'll ever do in your right. life. But people want to get out on the water in the summertime, so they figure out a way to do it. Similarly, in skiing, you know, cost is an issue. With with a season pass, you you can get good value if you are a frequent skier and you ski. 10, 15, 20 days a year, you'll get great value out of a season pass. But one thing we found with millennials is, um, you know, for the ones who aren't really core committed skiers, they're, they're more infrequent skiers, they're not necessarily planning ahead in, the con in conjunction with the timing of season pass deadlines. So they, they don't buy a season pass and then they wait till the last minute and then they go to the, the, t the ticket window or they try to buy a ticket like the day before on the resort's website and there's a bit of sticker shock when it comes to that. And so there probably is less value, the value proposition is probably a little lower for a day ticket than it is for a season pass and millennials were, were shocked by how expensive skiing can be when you wait till the last minute. Mm -hmm. But we're all we're all getting more into the last minute stuff, and there's and it's easy to do last minute things now because you can go online and find a hotel room last minute. You can go online and find a plane ticket last minute. It's harder to find a lift ticket last minute. That's uh, you know a cheap a cheaper lift ticket. So cost is certainly an issue. You know owning the equipment is an issue for millennials. Some of them don't want to. You know tend that generation tends to want to use things but not own them yeah so bike sharing programs are really popular because people don't necessarily want to own a bike but they want to be able to use a bike uh -huh. to get around town so you know could a ski area come up with a rental program that 
was flexible but convenient for someone who didn't want to own the equipment but and also didn't want to schlep it back and forth to the resort every time are we are we seeing a rise in in rental uh in rental growth seasonal rentals are definitely much more popular i don't have any numbers per se on that but just anecdotally i know seasonal rentals are in business in certain parts of the country but in other parts of the country you really only your only option is really a daily rental and so i think there's a lot of opportunity for resort for resorts to develop a seasonal rental program for somebody they could leave the leave the skis at the mountain that yeah, way i don't have right. to bring them back and forth and i right. show up my skis are there and right. i'm ready to go it's a great way to lock somebody in too and from then, a loyalty standpoint yeah and then yeah i'm, I'm going to come back to that mountain because that's where my skis are yeah you don't have much choice <laughs> <laughs> so one other barrier was uh lodging both from a cost standpoint and from a, the type of lodging that that in, in general the, a lot of millennials preferred which was which was more of a group lodging like a, a a condo or a house that you could rent on Airbnb where you could you know cook a meal and, and sit by the fireplace and uh, watch the movies or, and just hang out in a more social setting as opposed to a traditional hotel room where you might only have a couple people per room and it's harder to have a, a group experience when you're all in hotel rooms and not, not to mention that oftentimes the Airbnb once you divide the cost up amongst the group of people that you have, it's often cheaper than a yeah, it's hotel. A, it's a good value. Yeah, so it's a good value. It's the type of experience that millennials are looking for. And so making sure that there's there's Airbnb-type options for your millennial customers in addition to your hotel rooms. This is off the record. Uh, so, so Everything's off the record. Here we are. It's the mini-meat suite.